Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to go over in 3ds Max how to set up a basic Octane PBR network. So what we have here is a dragon and this will be our model that we're going to be working with. And it's already set up with a PBR texture network. So what I'm going to do is start clean and delete the network and rebuild it from scratch. So right here is the full setup. And I'm going to go in and explain what each of these nodes do. And how we plug it into the universal material. So let's start with a clean slate by deleting everything. I'm going to drag in a universal material and now I'm going to apply this to overwrite the last material setup we have. And if we look at the model now it's actually a white color but set to a, I think 0.7 albedo that should be the default. And we can take a look here. Right now albedo is set to none but if we go to the value it's actually 0.7 and 0.7 is actually uh, being applied here. We're going to start bringing in some RGB textures and uh, since this is a PBR texture setup we're going to uh, most likely deal with four maps. And the four maps are going to be the albedo, metallic, roughness, and normal. So let's start with uh, searching for the RGB image node right here and you can tell that uh, it's an octane renderer map. So we bring that in. And I'm gonna make this a little bit larger for now. So can we see can we can see what we're doing? So here we're gonna load in the albedo texture, which has RGB channels. And we know that the normal map will also have RGB channels. So we're gonna duplicate it by holding down shift and dragging it out. So now we have an RGB for the albedo, RGB for the normal. And now we're going to bring in a grayscale image. Now you might be thinking, why are we bringing in a different node for this? And that's because in Octane, an RGB image has three channels, but a grayscale image has one channel. Therefore, it's much easier and uses less memory. And when it comes to VRAM of your GPU, you want to use the least amount of memory as possible. So there's no point in feeding a grayscale image into an RGB image node. So we know that the metallic is a grayscale image and the roughness is also a grayscale image. So we'll set up these four just like this. And this is the 2D transformation. Now the 2D transformation controls the rotation scale and translation of the texture. And since we are mapping it to a model that has a UV map, we don't really need to worry about this too much. And we don't want to have multiple 2D transformation for a texture set because they should all work together. So we're going to delete this and rehook up this one um, transformation uh, node to the other two. So now we have one transformation we're controlling all four textures that work together. All right, so we have that out of the way and now we're gonna plug this in. So of course we plug it into the albedo, the metallic, roughness, and we go straight to normal. Of course, we don't have any images loaded in here right now, so that's why our model is right now turning extremely dark. And that's because it's uh, it's defaulting to a black setting. And what we're gonna do now is load in the information that we need into it. So we're gonna go to the RGB image and click on file name. And we're gonna browse to the directory where we have the textures. I just happen to have it under this folder right here, text. And we're gonna look for the file that says albedo, which is this one. And we're going to select that and hit open. And once it's loaded in here, we'll have the albedo map uh, in place, but we need to make sure that the gamma setting for this texture is set correctly. And so different programs can output the texture with different gamma values. When it comes to the albedo map, it generally has a gamma of 2.2. When it comes to the metallic and roughness, these are not color texture maps, but they're more for information or data. And therefore, they normally have a gamma of 1. But it also depends on the program that you're using. So it's not always 1, but it should be 1. And then the normal map is also a data type of map. It's not really, uh, it's not really to display colors, but it's used as information. So that should be set to a gamma of 1 also. Now again, it depends on the program and what it's outputting 
and if you have the option to set it to a gamma of 1 or 2.2. So you have to check where the texture maps are generated from, or you can visually check it to see if it's working. Normally it's either 1 or 2.2. In this case, it should always be 2.2 for the color, metallic should be 1, roughness should be 1, and normal should be 1. So let's go ahead and load in the rest of our maps. Let's go to metallic, metal, go to roughness, roughness, and normal. Now keep in mind when you load it, you might have an option here that says gamma. It says automatic or override. This is ignored if you use the octane RGB or grayscale image nodes. So just keep that in mind. And once this is set up, we can take a look at our model again. And it looks like it's pretty much set up correctly right now. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the normal. Normals are also outputted differently depending on the program that you're using. So normally there's two types of normal maps and the difference is the G channel or the green channel and it's either flipped or not flipped. And the only way we can really verify that is by looking at the model. But in this case, I'm looking at the scales right now and it looks a little bit off to me, uh, the way the highlight is uh, reflecting of it. So I'm gonna try flipping the, um, the G channel and see if we can get better results. In Octane, you need to go to the Octane uh, Octane Live Database. We'll open that window up. Go to Live Database. Go to Oltoy. We're going to do a procedural texture effect and it's a utility. And what we're going to use is the channel inverter. Right click, import it. And what that's going to do is uh, it's going to drop it into the sample slot. And right now it's right here. I'm going to drag it out. Yes, we want to create an instance and plug it in. And it already has an effect, but we want to specifically flip the G channel or the green channel. And right now it's flipping the R. We'll go to green. Ah, uh, that looks much better. So now the normal map looks proper. And uh, let's uh, let's do a quick side by side comparison. I'm gonna make a copy here, and then I'm just gonna bypass it and go directly here just to see the difference. Yeah, so the highlight here, you can tell it's kind of like getting really wide and flat and it's following a odd curve where the highlight should be following this nice little curve on the bottom here. And that's how it should look. And that's basically it. I hope that tutorial wasn't that long. I was supposed to make it quick, but uh, maybe I'm talking too much. Uh, anyway, so take a look at this. Remember, it's the RGB channel should be 2.2 gamma. The metallic, one. Roughness is one, and normal is one. Like I said, that depends on the program you're using, and sometimes they don't do that, and sometimes your gamma might come out as 2.2. So if it looks really weird, the metallic, or maybe it's too um, shiny or not shiny enough, you can uh, flip those values to take a look to see if it's uh, making a difference or not. And, um, and see how that goes. And the normal. Now in this case, if I make the normal 2.2, it completely looks wrong. Go back to one there. So one thing I do want to uh, point out, if you go into Universal Material, you'll see that there are different BSDF model. Octane provides three different kinds. Octane, which is the original Octane version. Uh, we have the Beckman, which is very popular. And we have GGX. In most cases, we use that for metal. Um, in this case, I think I'm liking the Beckman version more. Yeah, I kind of like Beckman a little bit more. All right, thank you.